Okay, even before we take a look at any Drizzle code, it's probably worthwhile to see how Prisma and Drizzle differ philosophically a little bit. So Prisma considers itself an ORM, an Object Relational Mapper, and Drizzle does too, but Drizzle calls themselves a headless ORM. And the idea is this, Drizzle would tell you that tools like Prisma should be considered data frameworks, meaning that if you use Prisma, you're kind of bought into the whole framework. It sits at the center of your project, any calls into your database, and most of the interaction with your database happens through that framework, and you're kind of tied to it. The difference with Drizzle, at least what they will tell you, is that it's more opt-in. You can take little bits of it at a time, you could take the whole thing if you want to, but you're not tied into using it at the center of your project in the same way that you would be with other tools like Prisma. And we can see how this shakes out if we look at our schema.ts file. This is where we'll start to work with Drizzle. Let's export a constant called posts. And as you might imagine, this is going to represent our post table. We'll call for a function called PG table that comes in from Drizzle ORM slash PG core. And in here, we can define our table and its fields. So the table is posts. We want to have our ID field. That's going to be a varchar. This is another function. It auto imports here from the MySQL variety of Drizzle. What we want to do, though, is pull that in from PG core instead. So varchar will give it its name, ID, and then we'll say that that's the primary key. Then let's have some other fields. Title, varchar for that as well and that's gonna be called title, and let's get the contents. We'll just get these three fields for now, just to get a sense of how this works, and then we'll come back for the rest later. All right, so you can see this kind of looks like Prisma in some ways, at least in the way that we would define our fields. This is all in TypeScript, of course, whereas with Prisma, when we're here in the schema.prisma file, this is the Prisma schema language. So a little bit different here, but the same kind of idea. We're describing our tables and what belongs on each table. So now what we need to do in order to use this is get ourselves a little bit set up here in our Drizzle file. With Prisma, when we use the Prisma clients and when we generate it, we get all of the things that we need to connect to our database and we can just start using the client right away. It's a bit different though with Drizzle. With Drizzle, we need to kind of connect to our database outside of Drizzle. And what that looks like is this. Let's import PG from PG. And if we recall, PG is the Postgres package that is kind of de facto for Node. And then we can give ourselves a client. So const clients equals a new PG client and then we can get our connection string. So for this, we can do process.env, and let's actually go into our .env file and see what we called it, and we have a typo, actually. Let's do drizzle instead of drizzle. Save that, copy it over here to process.env, .drizzle, database URL. So there's our clients. Then in our function, when we want to use it, we can come down and say await client connect, and then in the middle will be our drizzle stuff, calls to drizzle, and then at the end, await clients end. All right, so let's just run this really quick just to make sure that we're not gonna run into any issues. npm run dev drizzle. And if we do that, we get hello from drizzle, no errors, so it looks like we're connecting okay, and we're all set up to go. All right, so next up is to import that piece of schema that we've got over here in db slash schema. And we can use that then to make a call to our database using Drizzle. So same idea here, we wanna do something very simple, just call for our post table. And here is what that looks like. Let's get rid of that console.log. Let's come up here to our midpoints and we can do const all posts equals await. And then the question becomes this, what are we awaiting? What are we using? Well, we are able to give ourselves a connection into our database using the PG package, but through Drizzle, if we do something like const db, and that's going to equal Drizzle, a call to a function called Drizzle. There's all sorts of different ones we can use here. What we need is going to be the Drizzle ORM slash node Postgres. So there it is, Drizzle ORM slash node Postgres. And what we'll do is we will pass in our client to it. So there we go, we've got Drizzle. It uses this client that uses the Postgres package. And now we've got this thing called DB that we can use. And so what do we get with DB? We can do DB dot, and then on here, we have got a bunch of different methods that we can call into our database with. 
And the idea with Drizzle is that it looks a lot like regular SQL if we're writing SQL. So we can do, for example, db select. That's a method call there. And then we can do from. And here at this point is where we would need to pass our post model. So post is going to come in from our schema. Import posts from db schema. All right, so we've got all posts. Let's console.log those out. Console log all posts. And let's take a look. Uh, the thing we're forgetting here is that we are not bringing in .env. So if we go import .env slash config, we should then get access to our environment variables here in this file. All right, last time, let's try it again. And this time we are good. We've got our post coming back. So there's the data straight out of our Drizzle database using Drizzle. And in some ways it looks kind of similar to what we do with Prisma, but in other ways it's sort of unique. And one thing to note here is that we're kind of grafting on this bit of schema to our database instead of having a whole model laid out where it's the source of truth for our database. And one thing that is implicated here is that if we, for example, took out one of these keys and we ran this again, there's no errors or anything. Instead, what we get is just whatever we've defined in our schema. So whatever we define in our schema is what's going to be accessible. And then we can start to use it to get data out of our database. We're fully type safe here in the same way we would be with Prisma. So for example, if we wanted to console.log all posts at the first index and we want to take its ID, we've got access to that. If we wanted to take the title, we've got access to that as well. But what about contents? Contents does not exist right now on our schema, so it's not available. If we comment that back in and we come back over here, now we do get it. So we get this full type safe picture, just like we do with Prisma. Everything is good in that way. But the way that we interact with our database through Drizzle is a bit more minimal than what we would do with Prisma. So with Drizzle here, we've got these operators like select, we've got from, and this looks like just regular old SQL. And that's the idea with Drizzle. It's a thin wrapper that gives us the ability to write SQL-like syntax to get access to our data. With Prisma, we've got methods like find many and find first, and we can do something similar with Drizzle to some extent if we pull in our whole schema, pass it to Drizzle, and then we'll see how to do that. So let's do that. Let's import all as schema from db schema. And now in our drizzle instance here, let's pass our schema in. All right, so we've got our schema. And what we should be able to do now is do db query. So we've got this query object and we've got posts on it. Posts is the only bit of schema that we've got right now. Posts, find first, find many, both options for us there. And let's see if this works. So let's run that again. And we're just logging out the contents. We can take that out and make sure that everything is coming through. Should be just fine though. There we go, all of our posts. We've got find many, we've got find first. So very similar to what we get with Prisma. But what we don't get with Drizzle are methods to do things like update. So there's nothing for updating on our posts. There's nothing for deleting on our posts. For those, we would use the regular kind of SQL operators with Drizzle. So a couple different options for finding data. We can use either find many like this, or we can take our post just by using the SQL operators. And with Drizzle, we're able to do whatever meets our needs. Why don't we just flesh out the rest of this schema here? So we've got content, and I'm just gonna paste in the rest. We have got author ID, and we've got published ad, created ad, updated ad. There's another function here called date. Let's bring that in from PG Core. And that should fill out our post table. We can see that that's going to all work and give us what we want. If we run this again, we get the rest of our content now. Why don't we just put in the rest of the modeling for our other two tables while we're at it. So this will be in the GitHub repo for the series. You can pull it from there. We've got users, we've got categories, and we are all set to go right now. What we don't have yet are relations between these tables in the same way we do with Prisma. If you recall, with Prisma, we're relating data just in line here, right in our modeling. Setting up relations in Drizzle looks a bit different. It's a little bit more complex, and we'll take a look at how to do that in just a little bit.